<laughs> I can hear everyone no static. Sounds like we're in okay shape. Good, good. All right. We seem to be doing okay. I've dropped your all's volume a little bit, so you're not quite as loud. Okay. Now, yeah. where were we? <laughs> Hello, everybody. Yes. There you go. Yeah. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Magic Mics, proudly sponsored by our Patreon supporters and CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day. And we begin, as we do each week, by saying hello to my two co-hosts, Aaron Campbell. Is this thing on? <laughs> it is, we are on now. This is actually we round two now. for those who are okay. listening to the podcast. We actually had to reboot the whole thing. But we also have Ruben Bressler. I was going to do a similar joke, but Aaron's was funnier. So, <laughs> hello, everyone. Oh, glad, okay. glad we could actually be here. Sorry about that. All right. So... Here we go. Uh, we have a heck of a week. We were just in Vegas. Vegas was sweet. Um, I got to talk to a bunch of cool people. I never actually met Wedge or the Professor or Graham from Loading Ready Run, and like that was super cool. And, uh, and those guys were super great. There was a there was a, a content sort of summit thing that Wizards did that we got a we got a chance to take part in, and I got to talk to Wizards about stuff. I got to talk to other creators about stuff. Which was totally awesome. Yeah. Uh, which was super nice, and uh, we also had that awesome experience of me not really sure where my head should go, because I'm <laughs> talking to you, or then I'm right. talking to her, and yeah. then I'm not sure where I'm supposed it's to be straight talking. Forward. Because there's an audience right there for you know for me when I'm doing this as we have for years now, literally years. Yeah. It's always right here, and you got to be right here, and no head be turning all over the place. So it was a little little off putting, but I think we made the most of it. Shout out to the fans, though, too. Like, we, I mean, three-fourths of the seats were full for our panel. We had people waiting for us before we started to, like, yep. you know, say hi, get selfies, things of that nature. Um, afterwards, there were people waiting, asking for us to sign things. Like, we got showered with love. I know, Ruben, you had a tweet specifically where you kept track of all the interactions that you had. And yeah. you you were popular. We all were popular. It was we all wild. Were popular. Yeah. yeah, it was crazy. I had people... Basically hyperventilating, like, oh, I'm, I love the show so much and I can't, like, trying to get the excitement out, but yeah. it's, like, too many words to get out at one time, and so it was, it was, it's an interesting thing being a sub-sub-subculture celebrity that appears in public every once in a while. Yeah, there were people that, like, had their favorite episodes and they had their favorite moments, and it was just like, I don't even remember these moments, but okay. Right. <laughs> all right, so I've, I, I think I've fixed all of the audio problems. First, there was no one could hear you. And then there was, I sound like I'm in a tin can, which means I probably had the wrong microphone selected. So are we good now? Can we f officially good <laughs> be good? Can we talk about magic? Because yeah, sure. way too much techno technological whatever here. So yeah. Rubes, you got lots of pictures. You had people who, you know, wanted them to uh, have you tell them, you know, you get that. That they're wrong and I hated them? Right. Yeah, that's weird. That's a weird thing now. That people come up to me and are like, Ruben, I'm a big fan. Could you tell me that I'm that you hate me? And I'm like, mm, <laughs> sure. Sure, whatever. That's a weird thing, but sure. That's the thing I do now. Um, yeah, that was great. That's my, my most life. important picture. I don't know if you guys saw this, but um, I was able to take a selfie uh, with my one true love, uh, Reed Duke, on wow. Saturday night. Yeah, I saw them. Hashtag, Hashtag Baywatch. Baywatch. Um, he wow. was super great. I was so nervous. I was stuttering. I was shaking. He was so cool. He put his arm around me. Aww. I can die now. <laughs> he knew my name. I was just like, he knew who you were. Senpai. Yep. <laughs> Why you noticed me so hard, Senpai? <laughs> yeah, it was, it was great. <laughs> That's amazing. So it's it's just been a few days, more or less, since we were there, since we're back. The show was cool, you know, obviously in that it was a live set and we got to see everybody. That was great. Like, the crowd actually, like, filled up over time, which was, like, totally yeah. awesome because, like, it didn't thin out over time. That was no. that was another right. concern. That, like, you know, we're, like, sure. 45 <laughs> minutes in and there's just, like, nobody there. Uh, so that was cool. Um, but yeah, we, we kind of... We kind of had I was to... so glad that we got to do a live show and I, I want to do another one so that we can improve upon it. Yeah. Uh, the audience could be a little closer next time. I could. I, yeah, that would. Yeah, been we nice. really, we really wanted to. You know, we 
we wanted to feel the love, you know, like we, we heard it, you know, we saw that there were physical bodies there. We, we heard, you know, cheers and applause, but you know, Ruben, you mentioned it, especially with your comedy roots, you can sometimes feel yeah. how hype people are. And because we were so far away because of right. the layout of the stage and because of them preparing for that giant magic that they were doing, we couldn't really feel it. And so even when we were giving away the gift certificates, they had to run a good distance yeah. to get them. And so that was dangerous too. We had people running to the microphone Literally. downstairs. Yeah. It was, that was kind of, uh, uh, I didn't really like. A I, I kind of knew. Like, I think the easiest one, one of the easiest ones, was the you know who, who was our only guest. Okay, it's a Lumberjack. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was like, I, I don't really know how to pick random people in that way when right. you're in that setting, which is interesting. I also got word that uh, as of midnight Eastern Standard, thanks to our buddy Wedge from the Mana Source, we will have a brand new spoiler that he has like been flipping his crap on. So. Crap you has mean been flipped. Live on this show, it'll have like it, I mean, you'll upload it near the end of our show. Yeah, so we'll be able oh, to okay. look at it and talk about it, and that'll be super sweet. Cool. So, good. so that's sweet. Um, but yeah, there was our so, spoiler will be next week. Yes, our spoiler. We have one. Well, it's coming. Yeah, our, our official preview for our devastation to come next week. Please don't spoil it. Yeah, no. You, you losers, cut that no, out. Just, <laughs> look, no, you do what you want. You, you do you. And, you do you. And by doing you, don't do that because that's annoying. I mean, the last time that card of ours got sniped, we got like four in exchange. Yeah, they gave, they I mean, just were like, ah, here's a bucket of other spoilers. Right. Well, so I mean, I'm here's cool one. Of, well, I mean, it was one of the best mythics, man. It was sweet. Anyway, it was, but it's it got so like was. five uncommons. And we got the invocation version. I'm not saying that wizards didn't come and help us out. All right. I'm not saying that. Um, it is the best mythic, but don't read today's magic spoiler if you're terribly attached to Ronas. Just... Wow. Wow. That's a spoiler. That in and of itself. <laughs> it's like, I don't get too attached to any of those Rogue One characters. I mean, you know, whatever. Right, I didn't exactly. want to say anything. But I'm just not whatever. saying anything, but don't get too attached to Kaiser Soze. <laughs> I still haven't work. seen that movie, by the way. You should. It's a fantastic flick. Um, okay. Either way, you know, so, so some props and some slops uh, for Channel Fireball. First of all, amazing event. Having us on there. Super cool. Letting us do the thing. It was great. That was amazing. Letting us know the setup would have been really awesome because we could have helpful. we could have done some things. I didn't know there was a projector screen. There was an entire amazing audio visual crew there. Rig. Those yeah. were amazing people, and they helped the me. The sand sculpture. The sand yeah. sculpture was thing. Spectacular. Stage. Right there, like yeah. the bleacher seating. Like it was the lighting was like that was legit, man. That was amazing. Yeah. Had we known that they would have had an actual Thunderdome for us to be able to perform on, we, like, could, have we could have done some interesting things. Absolutely. I could have done like probably some slides or something. We could have shown while we were talking about stuff. Like, huh. there, there were options and, and opportunities, and it's cool. Like Clearly, I had a great time. I think we all had a great time. It was fun. But maybe next time we'll, we'll plan a little bit better. You know, also, being yeah. locked into the 15 minutes was was restricting for us because we're you know, our our fans have gotten used to the you know hour plus show and we're used to sort of just kind of free forming and and we really were like it 50 minutes like we got the I saw yeah. the young man on the side I was like hey gotta get out and they'll pull the plug and so that Eight was millionaires never, next gotta get off the stage right. right we weren't used to that at all I mean I I did my best to try to keep it moving without being obvious like oh my god like pop 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 let's keep it going. Uh, which is fine. The point These are is, nitpicks because this is Magic Mike's, but overall right. it was amazing. We're yes. picking the nits. All right, so <clears throat> so one of the things uh, I like to do and, and work with uh, various partners and people who do awesome things, such as the Metal Tokens that Cool Stuff Games is doing uh, for the Hour of Devastation pre-release, uh, is to do something that you've never seen before. And I have never in my life seen a token uh, that not only was metal, that not only had holes cut out of it, that had holes cut out of the outside wow can you open one of those is that is that possible so you're saying the side isn't smooth like a normal card it has like grooves or Correct. ridges Correct. wow it, it, it has it has grooves it's not sharp or anything um <laughs> but <Cut> a bitch <laughs> right so that's I mean, this week's giveaway that's we are given i want to give away an entire playset because you know what we have a locust god now and he's gonna make lots of super cool scarabs and you're gonna need a playset of these awesome metal tokens and so we will have a giveaway that uh, I will set up shortly because I had completely forgotten about it because I'm a I'm an adult. Um, but That's either fine. way, we will give away four of these. I will tweet the link and send the link to the chats here in just a moment as I let you guys talk a little bit uh, about you know sort of the was was there anything else going on at GP Vegas for you guys? Any memories you guys would like to share? This is the time. 
I mean, it's the magic art show. I know that we talked oh, about it. It's amazing. I know. We talked about it a ton. I was so hype on it leading up to it. And you know how, like, a lot of things don't live up to expectation? And you, you're just like, yeah, I've heard that the Mona Lisa is the most beautiful painting in the world, but it's, like, this big. And you're like, it's pretty cool, but it's, like, not spectacular. Like, the very few things actually live up to all of the hype and then exceed it. And the Magic Art Show did for me. Like, 200 pieces, like, of... Of not just original art, but like sketchbooks of theme uh, 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 stuff of like um, sketches of what the world looks like. You got to up close and personal see the the Nissa that was on the aluminum sheet. Um, yeah, there there was you times know, you got where to see color studies. I swear, like there is something magical about the artwork when it's like right in front of you when it's real. It's different. Yeah. First of all, clearly, you know, it's a lot, you know, clearer than it is on a little tiny card. Um, but it's impacting. Like some yeah. of the colors were just like just jumped off at you. That Nissa was radiant. It was amazing. It was a picture from original. I think it was original Innistrad. A uh, bump in the night. I think it is where it's got the the blowing curtains. I didn't know that there are eyeballs on. The oh, curtains. that was uh, that was just a, just the wind. Just the wind. Yeah, my Chris that and I went insane. to the art show and we'd seen that card so many times, but until right. we saw the print, we were like, and I saw other people tweeting about it. They're like, I didn't know there were eyes there. Like it was wild. Like you got to see insult to injury, like both pieces, but it's one piece. Yeah. So you got to watch, you got to see the whole panorama of that. Um, there was the uh, Atraxa sculpture for Shadow Study uh, that was there. That was really cool. I mean, just, and the other thing was that the artists were coming in periodically and just every once in a while you'd be looking at a piece of art and then Howard Lyon would walk up and be like, I, I'm going to talk about this piece I painted for two minutes. <laughs> um, it was just such a cool experience. Shout out to Mike Lineman for, for, you know, and, and all of, of course, all the rest of the the, the uh, Magic Art Show, yeah. uh, you know, group, the the cosplayers, and all the other folks who put it together. It was just spectacular, and I can't wait to see new ones at future events, focusing on you know, focusing on Dominaria or focusing on original Magic Art. Or if they go overseas, you get to have some of the European artists or some of the Asian artists. Um, and it's just it's just unreal the 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 work and the the payoff that was there. I was just grinning like a like a you know, seven year old, the whole time, the, the 40, the whole 45 minutes to an hour that I was in there, I was just grinning, just like, this is spectacular. This is the kind of thing I want Magic GPs to be like. Yeah. Speaking of cosplayers, shout out to Christine Sprinkle, who just consistently ups her game. Her Oketra is just. Disgusting. Yeah, and she's like, pretty. Sprinkle, how are you like this? Like, just when you think, like, she cannot get any better. Like, just when you think she's, like, squeezed every drop out of that orange, she comes up with something else. The Oketra was insane. She came back the next day and did an Una, Queen yep. of the Fae, where it was just beautiful. Like, she yep. just consistently wow. ruins. Like, I just love everything about her. And I'm always surprised she's she's consistently upping her game. She's setting the bar, raising the bar. Like, I just can't say enough about her. Um, and I think that the thing that stood out to me about this weekend, and I know that several other creators had alluded to this as well, is... It's very easy to sort of, we spend so much time on the internet and we spend so much time using Twitter and Twitch and chat and text. And we tend to forget that there's people behind all of this. You know, we, we look at ourselves in terms of likes and followings and retweets and downloads and things of that nature. But it's so different when you're actually meeting people, when you're meeting the faces behind these screen names, the people, um, your Patreon subscribers, you know, we're not just handles, we're not just, you know, numbers. And so that was the thing that really, um, you know, stood out to me this weekend was putting names with faces, having people r remind us why we do what we do. Um, and it just adds a different element there. You know, it's one thing to have someone tweet at you and say, I love what you do. It's another to have a person standing in front of you and be geeked to meet you and just be like, yeah. this is why we do what we do. And it's like, it, it was just a real uh, refresher course. Um, Cause sometimes we forget all of that because we don't, we don't get to get out very often. You know, we don't get to meet it. We don't get to do a live show every day. And so it was a, it was a very cool reminder of what we do. So one of the, one of the cool things that happened while we were there, first of all, we got to hang out in a physical space together for the first time. Yeah. Yeah. The it, three of us. Literally we've been podcasting <laughs> for years. And we had not been in the same space until last week. Yeah. So right. that's a thing, which was yeah. cool. I mean, you know, 
clearly all of us have sort of we, we different ways we've kind of interacted with each other. But the point is, uh, afterwards we kind of we got to go to a really cool lunch. We kind of got to sit down, we got to talk about things and stuff, and we threw out some ideas for maybe bringing you more of us because we tend to get along pretty well we seem to be doing an okay job at this here podcasting thing and we said hey what if we can make another program but instead of being another live program it will be a canned program yep. and there is a uh, there's a there's a different channel that does some stuff that is similar to what we are talking about doing, uh, which is essentially we're going to have what's called the Magic Mike's Top Ten. Every week, we're going to choose a top ten. We are all three going to make our top ten lists without telling each other what is on it. We will have yep. no idea what's on it until we reveal it live as we talk about it and then i'll i'll go ahead and do some you know post editing magic and you guys can have super cool top tens where we'll talk about our favorites and our worsts and our you know our bests and whatever right and it will be super sweet and i am excited to bring more content we'll have two pieces of content every single week from here on yep. out and those will be on uh stuff inc uh, somewhere? Those or? will be on this channel. On the, uh, oh, they'll be on this channel? Yeah, cool. they'll be on my channel just like everything else uh, that we've Perfect. been making is. So that'll be sweet. So you guys can find us, still still find us right here. Perfect. So that's sweet. And then if you guys have, so this will be our Magic Mike's Top 10. Um, and as our folks who are fans of us here, you should let us know what you think we should do our Top 10 list of. Um, because this is basically going to be an hour worth of Red Zone. Is what yeah. the show's going to devolve. <laughs> How dare you have that at number eight? I have that at two, and that's yeah. just going to be the show for for right. a while. And for those who are looking, I mean, look, man, it's not a it's it's not a magic mics if Ruben doesn't start to potato at some point. Uh, Essentially, most of the YouTube comments from our live show are about Ruben's internet. They were like, you know, the panel looked fun, and everybody and Evan looked really great, but Ruben's internet, like. <laughs> oh my that's god! That's just how I am in real life. I'm just fuzzy. <laughs> you know, eventually we will, as the chat has noted, we will get so meta, we will top 10 our top 10s at some point. Yep, essentially. We will have to. It'll be great. Yeah. Uh, but either way, we're going we're gonna to have that stuff started next week. Really excited. You'll see the first show next Tuesday. And then, of course, we'll be live, as always, on Wednesday. Um, we'll have our exclusive preview next week, as we talked about. So, all right. Stuff. Things. Spoilers. Yeah, Ladies sure. and gentlemen, it is time now we're going to talk about spoiler spoiler stuff in a little bit and, and we'll give you a spoiler warning unlike certain Miss Campbells of the world who just wow. <laughs> throw stuff out there you know I hope you don't get too attached to that Death Star um, thanks camps <laughs> so we have some sweet reveals finally of the set we're starting to see part of how our devastation works and i'm also really excited i kind of try to i try to look through this you know through the lens of if there was only one set how much of the things that we're talking about today would be in the one set instead mm -hmm. of being separate into a smaller set well the first thing i want to talk about is just something really minor i thought was neat uh which is the deserts there's the desert yeah. cycling lands there's an entire cycle they all enter the battlefield tap they're just like onslaught lands except they cost an extra generic mana to cycle uh however they are deserts and that's going to matter right, for lots of cards what do you guys think about this one so Super sweet. I love I love this idea. Uh, it turns it gives you uh, access to a bunch of abilities, and it's really good for limited. So I'm in love with them. I really like the hostile desert. Um, that is the man land that you activate by eating other lands, essentially, which I think has really never been done before. Like I think it's a really interesting way to to do man lands. You know, we're used to sort of the mute vaults. We're used to the hissing quagmires. You know, it's very standard. You know, you have some extra mana laying around. You tap it and activate this thing. You know, for two colorless and exiling a land, it, it, it activates it, which I think is really really cool. Um, I know that people have been excited about Gitrog Monster, possibly finally seeing like real standard play. You know, there's some some land synergies. You know, obviously delirium's a thing. Putting lands in your graveyard. You know, there are ways to feed this, and I think it's really cool. Um, I'm also a little concerned because there was a card they revealed called Scavenger Grounds. <laughs> well, hold on, we're, we'll get to there. We'll get to that in just a bit. Yeah. Now, the point okay. that my idea was that, or the ultimately the, the idea was that a They've made a cycle. It's like Onslaught, but it's super yeah. cool now because they're deserts. Things care about deserts. We're trying to make like a weird, like kind of uh, flame tongue Kavu that's, mm -hmm. that cares about having yep. deserts in your in player and graveyard. All of the cards I thought was interesting because they only care, like they care both if it's in play or your graveyard. 
yeah. which I think is super sweet, super synergistic. Yeah. But we're going to get to that ridiculous Aaron Hoser here shortly. <laughs> Okay, get in there. Jerks. But I wanted to talk a little bit about one of the big, uh, one of the big mechanics. Now, one of the first spoilers slash leaks, definite leaks of the set, uh, was adorned pouncer. This is the kitty cat. It's a super cool yep. kitty cat. It's got its claws coming out of the frame, and everybody just went nuts over what eternalize meant. And uh, and uh, you know the Adorn- and it turns out it's mega embalm. It's mega mm-hmm. embalm. Adorn Pouncer is a white and a generic mana for a one one double strike, and has Eternalize for five mana, two white and three generic mana. And Eternalize brings a four four token with all of the keywords of the creature that created it. So instead of just being a copy of the creature, it's now a four four copy of the creature. It's bigger, it's badder, it's scarier. That kitty cat's going to eat your face. And we'll talk about some other kitty cats here in a little bit. But it was really fun because, like, due to the way, you know, spoilers work and the fact that, you know, I, I help, you know, I run Gathering Magic, I was able to see some of this stuff because those, you know, part of things that they send us. And I was just like, I can't, I, I can't say anything, but that kitty cat's awesome, you know? Right. <laughs> meow, meow, pew, pew. And it was, it was really cool. So, uh, so how do you guys feel about the old kitty cat? I think the cat itself is great. I think the keyword embalm is, or, or eternalize is super boring. Um, based on, you know, it's, it's just Mega Embalm. It's like, oh, it's the exact same thing, except for it's a 4-4. Okay, it's, I mean, that's fine. I like some of the ideas that people had of, like, you kind of get a, like a, um, what, what's the thing Planeswalkers give you? An emblem? The emblem. It, like, yeah. it becomes an emblem of, like, if you eternalize Adorned Pouncer, you get an emblem that says your creatures gain double strike, or target creature has an emblem that, you know, something like that sort of bestow like i mean it's fine it's like a one one double striker those things are always dangerous because there's always combo potential with pump spells um you know like Vyashino you know, slaughter master and the various other double strikers the one one double strikers for two have always Did you sort say of that potential. via shino via shino okay. lizard see. lizard slaughterhouse <laughs> slaughterhouse five wow i mean this card's fine um I'm not. I'm not as excited about it now that I know what Eternalize does. Though. I mean, I guess, I guess a better question essentially is, you know, Eternalize. I'll read when you were saying it's a little bit, not pedestrian, but just kind of like it's weird to sort of, you know, cookie cutter what this is versus what Embalm was. Sure. Um, and, yeah, it's just Megamorph. It's just kind of sad. Well, I, I feel like this has flavor applications, though. You know, I so it's funny because right before I left for Vegas, I was reading uh, the Tumblr of Jay Anelli, who's the young man that we talked about recently, and very sweet guy. Uh, his kid is meme worthy. You should absolutely go follow him. He's great, and he was posting his theory as to what Bolus's plan is, and uh, he was talking about his theory that the Lazatep is going to be used to like coat the people who passed all the trials got killed by Hazaret, and they're going to come up with this really twisted army for Bolas. And so at the time, it was just a theory. Like, I don't think there was anything really to back it up. And then shortly after this came out, um, it made sense where it's like, okay, this is really what this is about. This is the, you know, the embalm is sort of making you the white friendly anointed zombies that are like there to pick the crops and raise the kids and things like that. You know, but these are the ones that are like getting coded. They're going to be in Bolas's army. And so from a flavor perspective, I thought it really made sense. You know, looking back at Megamorph, you know, I, I know there was the whole timey-wimey nonsense and that's how they tried to rationalize it, but it didn't really connect for me. I feel like this was more forgivable because it played into the flavor and the storyline. Like, I was willing to let it slide because it made more sense with the story. I mean, ultimately, I feel the, the whole idea of them being coded, just, it reminds me of, like, you know, Nicol Bolas is running like a Jiffy Lube and it's like, if we can just <laughs> get you all, you know, all all coded up here and my full <laughs> synthetic, you know, blend of crazy bolus magic, you know, then you will come out the other side, you know, just slip sliding your way into eternity. <laughs> it's just, it's weird to coat people with things and then be coded. I don't the know. trial of zeal is just a giant slip and slide. Like exactly. you pass all your trials and then woo, right into the last step. Like <laughs> jump into the vegetable oil. It's amazing. And then you jump into the breadcrumbs, you know, and it's, it's you've been coded, you know, it's, it's fantastic. And Ruben, now you're you know, a four, four. Exactly. You you potatoed directly. A potato is a four four. As it turns out, it's weird. All right. So either way, Eternalize is interesting. So there are gods now. There's three gods that Nicol Bolas like plucked. I know that Aaron, you you're a little bit more read up on the story as to how these gods became the gods they are. But I'll bring up here on the screen because they're super cool. And then Aaron, you tell me what these kind of things mean and or come from. Uh, how synthetic 
their oil was when they were gooped <laughs> when they got when they right. got layeredly squished and pl- I don't know where you get dipped in it. All right, so the locust the god. <laughs> it's there's nougat in there somewhere. The locust <laughs> god is a uh, red, a blue, and four generic mana for a four four legendary god. It's mythic, of course. It has flying. Whenever you draw a card, you create a one one blue and red insect creature token with flying and haste. For a red, blue, and two generic mana, you may draw a card, then discard a card. And when the Locust God dies, you return it to its owner's hand at the beginning of the next end step. Okay. The Scorpion God, <clears throat> which uh, someone in the office has already put Dwayne Rock Johnson's you know, face <laughs> on. It's fine. It's cool. Uh, Love it. A red and a black and three generic mana, so a five mana, six five who is a mm. mythic legendary god, of course. Whenever a creature with a minus one, minus one counter on it dies, you draw a card. For a red, black, and a generic mana colon, you put a minus one, minus one counter on another target creature, and when the scorpion god dies, return it to its owner's hand at the beginning of the next end step. So these things never go away. They're in the bolus colors. You know, there's there's one left, essentially. There's the black-blue one, which we don't know what it does yet. Uh, which is going to be super cool, I'm sure. So these things, they never die. They have amazing abilities. It feels like, you know, yet again, the red-black one is, like, ridiculous because they just can't make red-black ever work. It worked for, like, four seconds for Olivia Voldaren and then never again. (laughs) No matter what they did, red-black can just be unbelievable and they just can't make it happen. But these two gods, these two mythics feel like sort of parts pieces of the puzzle for them to try to build the Nicol Bolas deck that everybody dreams of. Yeah. Aaron? Yeah, I think these cards are really interesting. You know, I know when they first got revealed, there was some criticism about the name. They were like, well, that's a pretty lame name, the Scorpion God. But if I understand it correctly, and, you know, if there's any Vorthoses in the chat, feel free to correct me. Be- because they were sort of kept in, in Bolas's cupboard all these years, you know, their names were sort of lost to history. And the names are sort of meant to reflect that, where, you know, when Bolas came and he decided that he wanted to pervert the trials or corrupt the trials and still keep all, you know, some gods around to keep the trials going, you know, they were able to remain. So Hazaret stayed, Oketra stayed, but these three, you know, have been gone all this time. Um, and when he did the mind wipey thing to wipe the gods and kill everybody, literally nobody knows who these, who these gods are. Are, and that's why their names are the way that they are. And I think that's really, really cool. That's and also cool, really, yeah. really scary. Mm-hmm. Um, I, like I also that. like the, um, you know, Morrow, I think, had written a post kind of explaining why they don't have instruct- Indestructible like the the other five do, and that they're still kind of, um, they're still hard to kill, but, it you know, this is meant to be a little more pesky, if you will. Um, right. You know, even if you... You know, indestructible. You know, dies to minus one, minus one counters appropriately. And if you happen to come up with enough minus one, minus one counters, you can kill those gods, and they will stay dead. You can kill these three, and they will still come back, whether it be through a minus one, minus one counter, whether it be through damage, whatever. And that's meant to illustrate how how scary they are. Um, I think they're really, really cool. I love the storyline. I love that Bolas is sort of assembling this army. I love that these three are sort of ushering in these plagues that the locusts are going to eat through the Hachma. Um, I love everything going on here, and I think it's really. Be great. The what again? The Hachma. The Hachma. The Hachma. The Hachma. based language. <laughs> I don't. You know, these so, are the specially dipped. They're smothered, covered. You know, they're chopped. Yeah, perfect. They're fantastic. Right, so, I don't. I I can't read these as closely as I can in the number crunch. But I assume there's enough space in between the Locust God and the Scorpion God for the, the blue black one to be the Scarab God. It's the Scarab God. Yeah, it's gonna. It is the Scarab oh, God. The okay, scarab so God? terrific. Uh, so it, it has to be, I guess, because all the scarabs are blue and black now, right? Mm-hmm. There are, uh, you know, it's like dude beetle, I guess. Um, but yeah, I, I love that they're all insect based, and that's sort of just how the desert is—is is that they all have this exoskeleton carapace as uh, as his sort of three, as Nicol Boss's sort of three henchmen walking around Amonkhet. Um, yeah, I think that these are super <laughs> powerful. I'm interested to. See- did just, I potato again? Oh, a little bit. No, no. But, you know, it's just like, you know, just some good old gods. Never been meeting a no potato old god. Girl. Girl. We've been meeting a potato god. Just put a dip in lavender, put a potato on his head, call it a day. Ruben, oh, the potato god. <laughs> well, no, your name will have been lost to your internet connection. Oh, so true. Well, I guess potato the potato god. Yeah. <laughs> it would just be that. like a pixelated photo, you know. <laughs> Whenever he disconnects, he reconnects. You know. <laughs> right. At the end of every instant. Yeah, both of these, both of these are super interesting. I'm interested to see these on, uh, you know, all of the commander-based uh, outlets that there are out there. 
uh, and see what the folks at Commander Cast and you know versus Commander guys have to say about these guys. Mm-hmm. Which is sweet. So the two gods are really interesting. We'll see what the Scarab God does, which I'm sure is also really cool. And I'm, you know, and as we'll see in some of the other cards, I feel like Wizards is really trying to make this Bolus deck happen. It's like yeah. this this thing you can build it. There's lots of tools. There's scary monsters. There are different mana costs. You know, stuff like that kind of keeps. Really, I, I, I think I think I think what you said is is correct, Evan. But I also think they're hammering home how scary all of this is. And we kind of touched on it during our live episode of like, you know, the Gatewatch has never really had a, a high stakes threat before. You know, we thought we had it with Emrakul and that sort of, you know, Moon X Machina kind of thing happened. But, you know, when you're looking at these cards, you really do feel like this is scary. Like, you know, this is not, you're wondering how the hell they're going to get out of this. You know, you see the Accursed Horde card, which I love, Victor Minga's literally first person view of zombies coming at you. You know, you're looking at the Locust God and even one of the other cards just swarm intelligence. There are hundreds of locusts, giant locusts that are eating the Hecma that are coming at you. You know, there is this sort of hammering home of like, what the hell are you going to do? Because this is scary. You've got Neheb that's now an Eternal and has been turned into a Lazatep thing. And it's like, right. I don't know how they're going to get out of this. And I really feel like they're cycle, hammering. They're hammering. Have a cycle up. of all of these defeats of various yeah. types. Like, it's you, scary. This is. Yeah. You, you know, I'm gonna yeah. keep up, even though I don't know how many people are actually getting it. I'm gonna keep up my Dukes of Hazard jokes here, because on all these defeat cards, that's when they that's when they just like they do that that freeze frame, yeah. and they go like, how do you know, boys how, get out of this one? How do how do Gate Watch going get out of this bucket of syrup? And then like, and you just never know how they're gonna make it happen. And then Gideon's gonna die because like he's supposed to have died like a million years ago, but they just won't let him die, so a Johnny can come back already. Uh, but Regardless, that was cool. We'll see what the gods are. Let's keep moving. Now, this is where we were talking earlier, Aaron. You were talking about Scavenger Grounds, which is a rare desert. I wish I wasn't. Taps for a colorless (laughs) mana. Two mana, two generic mana taps. Sacrifice a desert, not necessarily itself. Colon, exile all cards from all graveyards. So this is a card that's actually gotten some interest by vintage people. Yeah, there's been some discussion on the mana drain about it. Uh, workshops would have no problem using this. You know, uh, I play an anti-hate version of Vintage Dredge, which runs things like Chain of Vapor and, you know, Ingot Chewer and Unmask. And we can typically deal with, you know, the Grafdigger's Cages, the Leyline of the Voids and things like that. But, you know, <laughs> you know, we have no way to really deal with this. And so I'm a little concerned wow. about this card. Um, there's also the Crook of Condemnation, which is uh, sort of like a Relic of Progenitus type card, except you can choose uh, what card you can kind of ping away, which is really pesky um i did happen to take a look at the ixalan she i'm not going to reveal anything but there's also a really nasty piece of graveyard hate in there too um and so i can't help but wonder typically when things like this happen they're either trying to deal with things in previous sets like perhaps delirium or it means that we're getting something really really cool and they're off they're already giving us the tools to deal with it so i'm hoping it's the latter like maybe it's a wizard giveth wizard taketh away thing um but as of right now it's just looking like they're taketh away well we have well we have what I would describe as like the rubber band snap of wizards going like, Oh God, maybe we should put some hate cards in these sets because we kind of have all of them now. So for (laughs) those who aren't aware, crook of condemnation is a two generic mana, uncommon artifact, one generic mana tap colon exile target card from a graveyard. That's target, not relic of progenitus, which just says a card, uh, one generic mana, comma exile crook of condemnation exile all cars from all graveyards so once again exiling everything first on it's on a land that you can't do basically hardly anything about and second it's on this super relic of progenitus that does take a little bit more mana to get going uh however we have solemnity which is a white (laughs) and two generic mana rare enchantment players can't get counters counters can't be put on (laughs) artifacts creatures enchantments Uh or lands which is kind of awesome. Love it. The, it Solemnity. It can go on Planeswalkers, though. It can. Solemnity is this weird, like, it It does so many different strange things. Like, it stops Infect because you can't get poison yep. counters when you can't get counters. You can't get energy, <laughs> energy. because okay. you can't get counters. That's really cool and strange. And God, I wish this card was, like, you know, here a set or two ago. Counters okay, Company. Right? has been seeing more play in modern. It just shuts off Walking Ballista. It shuts off that whole circle jerk that they do. I mean, that's yeah. fine. That's amazing. 
Yeah. So the the fact that it kind of weirdly hoses like affinity and it hoses like these you know infinite loop combo things, it's just you know you can't get uh, you can't get experience counters apparently in uh, in commander, which right. I thought was perfect. I mean, there, there's a lot bad. of weird, interesting things that this card does that don't that aren't all like readily apparent. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah, it's it's pretty hilarious. It, it, this this and another card in the set uh, also combo with dark depths. Um, th- yeah, it just is weird that they were like, oh, we have all of the we lost all the files of all the hate cards. Let's just dump out the bucket into our <laughs> devastation yeah. and just print them all. Like, oops, all hate just cards. Hope for the best. Like, oops, oops, all hate cards. Well, we <laughs> needed this for Emrakul nine months ago. We needed the other Marvel two weeks ago. Here they all are. It's fun like, to look at this and be like, you know, they could have said something like, Etherworks Marvel is not banned, check out Solemnity, right? But if you've been around Magic long enough, and you've played enough Magic, and you've seen how these things go, an amazing hate card, even as amazing as this one, which literally just shuts that deck down just cold, is not enough. It's yeah. not going to stop a tier one. The best thing you can do in Magic, there's only so many times you're going to draw Solemnity. They're going to be able to put some sort of answer into their deck. I mean, it's Teamer. You're going to be able to disenchant something. And so, you know, having an amazing hate card doesn't necessarily negate an amazing strategy. But it's great to have, and it's important for the development of that metagame, which is why it was so sucky when it wasn't there. Because that was annoying. Yeah. I also want to go back to the flavor of Solemnity, too. So um, without giving away too many spoilers from today's story, um, if you look really closely at Oketra's helm, it seems like she might share the same fate as the person in today's story. Like, you look at the big hole in her eye. Oh, my God. Yeah. If you look really closely at her helm, you'll see that he was dead the whole time. (laughs) And... The other Death Star blew up, and then the third one <laughs> in the last movie, that one also, right. the Star Killer, that one too. Just, I'm just kidding. It's, 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 it's a little silly. Yeah, I, I like I like all the possibilities that you can do with Solemnity, though. Like it combos with Frexy and Unlife. It combos with a bunch of the, you know the Malira pieces, like you were referencing. It's a it's, you know Decree of Silence, as is referenced in the, in the chat, which sounds atrocious. Oh my God. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's that's a really funny one. I that's like that a one sick a lot. one. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's a lot of really interesting things that you can do with that card, assuming you don't get Nature's Claimed. But you know. yeah, fair enough. And and poor Oketra. I mean, there's just no getting around it. Oketra didn't make it. Oketra yeah. didn't get there. There's a card called Oketra's Last Mercy. I think it's okay for us to say Oketra don't make it. It's fine. So if you liked Oketra, it's not, it's not, gonna work, not really going to work out for you. Yeah. So there's a few more cards I wanted to talk about individually. And I'll try not to just kind of talk about all four at once. So let's take them just a little bit of a time. Supreme Will is one of the best blue cards I've seen in quite a while. It's a blue and two generic mana for an uncommon instant that says choose one. Mana Leak, which is counter target spell unless the controller plays, pays three generic mana, or Impulse, which is look at the top four cards of your library, but one of them in your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. Now, the original Mana Leak was a generic mana less. The original Impulse was a generic mana less. However, with their powers combined, it becomes one of the best cards I've seen in a while because the thing about Mana League, as powerful as metagame warping, and I mean metagame warping as that card is and was, you never wanted to draw it on like turn 10. It was just yeah, too late. Right. And this card is okay on turn 10. It's fine. This is a fine top deck. It is it is a better top deck than Mana League ever was. And mm-hmm. yeah, it comes at a premium, and that premium is important. But the fact that this exists now, I think all the blue control decks, by default, must think of this card before they put things like, you know, is it better to have the sensors of the world, or is it better to have the late game options of this card? I mean, it, you get both, right? Like, sensor is basically a split card, right? Where you can yeah. cycle it for one, or you can cast it for two. Sure. Uh, very similar vein. This is just a bigger sensor. Um, I agree that it's a big deal. I mean, the, 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 the superb power of Man League at least in its most recent editions, was that you could play a Delver on turn one and then Mana Leak on turn two, or a Champion of the Parish on turn one, uh, and have it be a tempo counterspell rather than a control card. Supreme Will being three mana puts it more in line with cards like Sage's Dowsing, um, which, again, was a super powerful card during its day, but it is, again, a three mana taxing counterspell. 
the fact that this one gives you the choice of being able to uh, use its other ability later in the game is a huge deal, and I agree that it's a big, big addition for what I assume are upcoming, probably Grixis control decks. Oh, Shaheen Sarani is just like, he's in heaven right yeah. now. He's just on the floor, and he's just kicking, and it's just yeah, all great. Shaheen all the time, man. It's just party at Shaheen's house, because holy crap, he has to be unbelievably excited. Yeah, yeah. it's a, it's a, it's a he's going to be a, a father? Yeah, he's going to be a dad. Yeah, MTG dad. Joining the MD, MTG dad clubs right here, what, what? <laughs> so I'm hoping this is part of a cycle of super playable uncommons, uh, Supreme Will and a Braid, which we talked about last week, a which braid. is the deal three damage to a creature or uh, destroy an artifact. I'm hoping we get you know similar you know something in let's say uh, black that uh, I think allows you, you to kill. I think you mispronounced it. A Braid uh, deals three damage to target creature or destroys target Gear Hulk. Um, Sorry, apologies. <laughs> target Gear Hulk I bet. dies. Dead. Yeah. Go away. I'm hoping that they. I'm hoping there's a black one that's like destroy. Uh, like it's actually just terror, or he said terror. Discard stuff, right? Like terror, destroy target non-artifact, non-black creature, or you know coercion, something weird like that, right? And you can do a bunch of a bunch of things like that, where it's like targeted removal in, you know, combat removal in white, like impeccable timing, or for damage prevention. Right, like there's, you, you can do stuff like that and, and have it uh, have it work. So I'm hoping there's a cycle and we get the other ones, because that would be sweet. Because both of these are great. Absolutely. So let's. So that that card I thought was very interesting and worth pointing out. Uh, another one I wanted to point out is Mirage Mirror. It's a three generic mana rare artifact. Very simple, straightforward. Two generic mana colon. It becomes a copy of target artifact, creature, enchantment, or land until end of turn. So that is two different ways that this set has let you just play a card and then play a Dark Depths and then just make a Dark Depths 2020, just instantly. Yep. Just actual, <laughs> if you have Solemnity out and you play Dark Depths, it just becomes a 2020 for free. You just played actual no mana 2020s. And Mirage Mirror's out and they have a Dark Depths. Like if you're playing against lands, right. oh, oh, I'm sorry. Two mana, I'll get a 2020. Everybody gets a 2020. Because, you know, lands, well, maybe they have Glacial Chasm, and I hope you don't attack me that much. And Well, even Solemnity with Glacial Chasm, it's just like, come on. like mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. It combos with both pieces. That's wow. crazy. Wow, good lord, it does, doesn't it? So, yeah, that's that's a real thing. So, Mirage Mirror in and of itself, like, the casual the casual employees, the people who like to play casual magic at CoolStuffing.com were just, like, flipping... Flipping the crap. The poop was being flipped and flopped. <laughs> they could not believe what was going on in their world because this thing copies everything. And when you're playing a huge multiplayer game, you just copy whatever you want. And not only that, you can like copy it to copy a Kiki Cheeky, and then I'll tap and make a whatever, and then I'll take, tap two more mana. You know, and I'm like, I mean, I, don't, I guess they can put it on the stack, I suppose. You know, like they'll stack the this copy and they'll stack another copy. And the, I mean, you know, there's so many crazy things this card can do. And they're all super fun. I don't know if the thing is, like, standard playable. I'm not sure. It feels weird. It's a lot of mana, yada, yada. It requires yeah. on other things existing. But the point is that there is no doubt this is an amazingly fun card. Yeah. I mean, it's this is going to be... I, I, this is mostly an EDH card, but we've said that before about a lot of cards. I can see applications for this, for example, in Modern Tron. Um, I think can make very good use of this card. Um... Yeah, this is a dangerous card to print. Uh, not just Dark Depths. I'm sure there's other applications as well. But this is a really uh, interesting card. Um, it's a cool sideboard option against things like Sneak and Show in Legacy, where if they put in their Emrakul, you can just be like, all right, here's my mirror. <laughs> Good luck, right? Go. <laughs> uh, so I think that it's, it's, it's a pretty sweet... I mean, it's a, it's a clone that resets itself. So, you know, you play your giant animal and then they wrath it away or destroy it in some form or fashion um but then you just still have this mirror so that next turn when you play another giant animal you can copy it immediately and attack that turn so that's it's just a it's a really good card i think 
It is it is super exciting. Aaron, are you are you copy you're not copying any abilities, are you? You just not I sure am not. I, I better not crap. see any copied Bachukabogs. I better not see any copied relics. I better no, no. Oh, the, the card I don't want I don't want to see any merit lages. I don't want to see any of that nonsense. Like I'm not looking forward to that card. The one thing it can't copy, and it's clearly very meant to not do this, is it can't copy planeswalkers. And yeah. that's good. I don't think anybody wanted it to. This alone <laughs> I mean, to be fair, if Gideon turned into a human, if ter Gideon turned into a creature, you could theoretically copy it, and then it would immediately die because it had no loyalty. But you could do it. Wow. Fair enough. Well, either way, the the idea of this card only costing three mana, the idea of it only activating for two, like colon, colon, you do yeah. it multiple How, times. Having right? well, it, it, it changes to end of turn. Sure, there's a weird combo. Yeah. Right. If you'll have to stack it and do something neat. The point is. In my opinion, again, like being able to look at sort of the long tail of magic and how they've been designing cards over the years and how this card just would literally would not exist ten years ago. Like they would have laughed right. you out of the design meeting. And now we have this incredible thing which does an incredibly powerful stuff. Super cheap. It's amazing. Let's keep moving. Uh, I'm really liking this Metalworth Metalworks Colossus idea, by the way. It makes them the first Metalworks Colossus cheaper and then you just go to copy it and attack with your eleven eleven. That's a really good one. I like that one a lot. That's pretty sweet. Um, yeah, that's a standard application. So we had talked about um, a braid earlier, and a braid is one of those cards that, again, powerful split card. Um, I think it just completely nullifies Angel of Condemnation. Angel of Condemnation was uh, was spoiled today, I think, by TCG player. It's two yeah. white, two generic mana for a three three rare angel with flying and vigilance. One white, two generic mana tap, exile another target creature, return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step, so it essentially blinks something away for the turn. Or right. a white and two generic mana tap, exert Angel of Condemnation, exile another target creature until Angel of Condemnation leaves the battlefield. Now, to be clear, this is a mega, ooper, super, like pull down the plunger and let the, the fireworks fly type of card. On yeah. limited, in limited, this yes. thing is bananas. But, yeah, like yeah, stone absolutely. cold and nutter and butters. This card is ridiculous, <laughs> no question. However, standard, they just gave them an amazing deal three damage spell, As and also the new the new flame tongue kavu sand strangler. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, th and, and angels with casting cost of two white white and having three toughness. Having a rough time trying to break into the standard metagame with Gisela followed by Angel of Condemnation. Card is sweet. I think the ability of of uh, exerting things without having to attack with them is a really interesting um, evolution of the ability. Mm -hmm. This card is amazing. It's really good at getting rid of the eternalized uh, tokens that your opponents make. Uh, but yeah, it's not gonna. It it, it can't with with a braid and uh, and the sand strangler. Uh, both seeing gonna gonna see play in standard. It just it made me really sad to see a card this cool and this exciting uh, yeah. that just can't really work. Essentially, I still like it for you know I've been saying this a lot throughout the show, but flavor reasons. You know they've established sure. that the the angels are essentially working for Bolas, if you will, that they're working for the god Pharaoh, uh, the the crook uh, in the flavor text. They specifically said the angels are taking the cartouches that would otherwise protect people, male angels. You know that's something we really haven't seen in Magic very often, and these these are these are male as far as I can see. Um, the invocation for Desolation Angel is this beautiful ebony man um, destroying the world around. Him, I think that's fantastic. Like I love that the you know we kind of saw it with um, you know Shadows of Innistrad too, angels being a force for for evil essentially, which is something we don't get to see very often. So I, I'm get, I'm having a really good time uh, ribbing Heather Heather Dawn about that of you know your angels are killing my mummies. Like what are you doing? And so I, I love the way that they're they're spinning the angels here. I mean the last also, time that happened, they spun the entire storyline around how <laughs> Abazin was insane. Yep. Right. You know, and now it's just like eh, they're angels are killing people. Just deal with yeah. it. Yeah. You know, whatever. It's bolts. I like Vigilance plus Exert is interesting yes. to me as well. It's super cool. So uh, another card I want to talk about, sort of the last of these, is Pride Sovereign, the ultimate kitty cat. The kitty cat, hey. the in-all kid, the meow of Yowersons. One green, two generic mana for a 2-2. Two -two. All right, so whatever. We have a we have a 3 right mana 2-2. Two -two. It's a rare cat. It gets plus one, plus one for each other cat you control, which is sweet. One white, tap, Exert it, create two 1-1 one, one cat creature tokens with lifelink all by itself for one mana. Now, whether you are playing Anointed Procession, so you can play a mana dork on turn two, this on turn three, 
Turn four, you can both play Anointed Procession and then <laughs> activate it and make four tokens. Or you just play this on turn three, as you would after playing a Mana Producer. And on turn four, you play the Regal Caracal, which will bring in three additional dudes and also pump right. it along with the other cats. And just doing all sorts of crazy, crazy stuff. Please, please, please let cat aggro be a thing. Just let it be a thing. Let us see the kitty cats attack and them going like, oh my God, you know, where's the litter box? Because it's looking like my face. And that's Anointed bad. per session. Yeah. Ooh, per session. Double up the, uh, the per count. Per, per session. session. Per Got session. it. That's per, great. Per session. I love this card just because it's Pride Month. Um, sure. And so when I first saw this, I was like, hey. And then somebody Photoshopped this to where it has rainbow stripes across it. Nice. And so does the main cat on the left. And at that point, I can get behind this card. I really didn't care before. But when it was all rainbowed out, I was completely on board with it. <laughs> so... I, I, so this is an Egyptian-themed world where they, you know, prayed to cats in ancient Egypt. The cats appear to be white and green, and Nicol Bolas is the other three colors. Is it going to be Nicol Bolas versus cats as the ultimate <laughs> end-all, be-all storyline? Yes. Where, where it's like, well, Liliana rolled into Innistrad, and she's got to be the unexpected hero of the story. And now it's going to be, well, first of all, Johnny's not here because he was smart enough to stay away. But is he going to roll in with his cat? Kitty Cat Pride Parade and and like try to take down Nickel Bolas with with claws and fangs. Is that, the, is that the end of the story? What, what? Well, I mean, have you seen your cat when there's a bug around? Cats lose their it's minds. They, like, I mean, if you got mind. a scarab, a locust, and a scorpion, put a cat. It's gonna be a really good time. It's gonna be crazy. Cat tribal is like a real thing, by the way. That's gonna mm -hmm. happen. We still got Metallic Mimic. That's what we I'm got saying. your preview card, Sacred Cat, as our aggro start, and then mm -hmm. you got your. Uh, this this uh, Pride Sovereign, so this card might be no joke. Maybe I mean, you know when Pride Sovereign loves himself very much, he makes two <laughs> new kitty cats. It's weird. By you can you know you can talk tell talk tell your kids you know have the talk have the cat Sovereign you know talk. It's fine. Yeah. The Pride Sovereign talk. <laughs> Either when way, exert, when it exerts itself very much. Right. Aww. Oh. Okay. So. We're going to move on now into gathering the townsfolk a little bit, and this is where we're going to give the spoileriest of warnings. Okay, we're going to give the spoileriest of warnings. If you don't want to talk about Ixalan, it's okay. I feel like, you know, yes, it basically, I, the toothpaste is out of the tube for me. And we talked a little bit about this in Vegas, but we didn't go into very many details. The toothpaste is out of the tube. There's a lot of the set that's been spoiled, unfortunately. I am a magic player. I love magic cards. That's what I do. That's why I've been doing this for so long. So if you give me new exciting cards, I'm here to talk about them. Because new exciting mechanics, new exciting cards. I'm not going to go over each individual cards. I'm not even going to spoil most of the, any, hardly any cards. I want to talk a little bit about some of the things in it, such as mechanics. I want to talk about one thing in it in terms of a very specific card, that's all. Uh, some colors of things, and that's pretty much the extent of it. So... Spoiler warning, it's cool, no hard feelings. Uh, first up, the Islan foil car, foil sheet got spoiled on Reddit. Nobody knows how, nobody knows why. It clearly looked to me like there was an employee. That's a problem. However, the fact that that's happened means that we know a few things. For example, there's an enrage mechanic. The enrage mechanic says when this creature is damaged, do something. Which, in a world of dinosaurs, is a pretty awesome, flavorful thing to do. You got you guys yeah. happy with uh, the enrage in there? Yeah. Oh yeah, I think that that's a super neat ability. Um, you know, we obviously don't know much of anything because it's nothing has been officially previewed yet. But based on what we've seen, I think the ability is super cool. Sure. And so uh, apparently, what they tell me is that uh, the Scarab God has been has been spoiled by our friend Wedge, and <gasps> so. We're not sure what it is yet. It's not on Mythic Spoiler yet, so Mythic Spoiler, you gotta... I'll just keep... I'm gonna reload Mythic Spoiler until we get it, and gotta, then you can keep, keep talking that, about Exelon. Get that game on. All right, so let's keep going here. So, first of all, Raid is back, which Raid with Pirates is perfect flavor. And of course. is amazing and fantastic. Raid is a super neat ability, by there, the way. It is. It's a great... Like, it just means if you attack this turn, you know, do a thing. Um, yeah. So... Uh, so, the Planeswalkers in Exelon, for whatever reason, are all, say, legendary now. And, oh my god! <laughs> and no one really knows why. 
the scare of gods on Twitter. I'm not even done reading it yet. Oh God, it's on the tweets. It's on the Twitter twatter. Scare of gods on Twitter. All right, let's let's take a it, look. It would be. All right, here oh we go. God. So the scare of God live, as we see it. A black, blue, and three generic mana for a 5-5. Five, five. So it's a 5-mana five 5-5 five, five mythic god. At the beginning of your upkeep, each opponent loses X life. And you scry X, where X is the number of zombies you control. <laughs> there you go, Aaron. A black, yeah. blue, and two generic mana, colon. Exile, target creature card from a graveyard. Create a token that's a copy of it, except it's a 4-4 four, four black zombie. So it basically is... <laughs> so you can is, eternalize anything. Eternalize anything for just four mana. Ooh. When the Scarab God dies, return it to its owner's hand at the beginning of the next end step. Jesus Christ, this card is ridiculous. <laughs> that card's pretty absurd. That card's super This neat. card is insane. Oh my God. Jesus go Christ. Your, obviously, everybody go watch... Wedges. Go uh, check video. out. I don't know what Wedge did for this, but man, not right now. Well, look, do it in like 50, twelve minutes. Jesus. Yeah, this card. This card's sweet. This is the best of the three. Well, let me tell you, one of my one of my super awesome employees. He's been playing. Uh, he's been playing blue black zombies, so he can play negate, which was important right. for Etherworks Marvel and friends. And sure. it's just been destroying people. He's been playing black blue zombies, and he's just like, no one gets it. I don't know why, but I'm just rolling over everybody. And this card, talk about being like the top of your curve. This card is crazy. Like, okay, I have three or four zombies out, and I just you lose four life automatically. Scry X automatically. Four mana, get rid of anything, and now it's a four four, including my own stuff. That's mm. insane. Yeah, this card is well. First of all, it's five five for five. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So it's like already got the body that you needed, which puts it past the locust god. The because I didn't think. Oh I don't think god. four four flyer for six is nearly as good. The art obviously is spectacular. I'm gonna put it on the screen. So, but it's go a, ahead, keep talking. This is quite. This is quite the, quite the abilities that the scarab god has. I think they're both better than both either of the any of the four abilities on the other two gods. Yeah, this right? one is way better. This one is just way, way better. It's kind of wow. stupid. So I I brought it on the screen here. You can see the super, super cool art. This thing is a 5 mana 5-5, five, five, just automatically doing things, automatically scrying. 4 mana to activate that as much as you want, which means when you drop this thing, you know, you're able to fire it off immediately if you have 9 mana. And if you're at the Grixis control deck, that's not crazy talk. Yeah. You could legitimately get there and be able to activate this multiple times the next turn when you untap with it if you have eight mana. Again, if you're the control deck, you're drawing cards, you're holding things, you're making things happen, you're answering stuff, you're killing creatures all over the place, the scarab god happens, and your opponent, you know, little pee comes out. Okay? A little, little tiny bit. The fact <laughs> this is I'm sorry. The fact that Wedge had to keep this one under wraps for all of GP Vegas makes me yeah. laugh a little bit. Nice. I like that. I mean, and this screams EDH, too. This also seems good in two-headed giant each opponent. You know, that is relevant text, where if you have enough zombies, that is multiple opponents that are losing life. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, it also gives zombies a way to have reach. You know, sometimes, you know, you do get these board stalls where, you know, say you're in a zombie mirror and you're just sort of bashing your zombies against each other. You know, this is a way to really get around that. You know, going back to EDH, you know, I tend to play, I play a Marchesa EDH deck that runs things like Ghostly Prison and No Mercy and things of that nature. Lose life is relevant relevant text you know if, if i have ghostly prison out who cares you're still draining me with losing life you know if i have machiko kanda out doing damage losing life that's relevant text like there's so many little things about this card that really matter and oh my god i'm 100 percent. wedge was right this card is fantastic this and card, also it, um, oh that, that's a huge kopesh yeah <laughs> a huge kopesh and Except look, got a big copish. they're all slathered in the, in the synthetic awesomeness of bolos yeah. oil. It's like, woo! Yes. Yeah. I'll, I'll say one thing about the art direction for the gods in particular is it looks like they've all got humanoid bodies, and then if you are the blank god, that's what your head is made of. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of weird. Yeah, they actually made, they highlighted that in the story, too. Like, that was something that they kind of... Uh, Stress, if you will. Yeah, and people were like, that's how you can sort of tell them apart. If Where does the scorpion god poop from? Is my question. <laughs> oh, does he scoop does he poop wow. from his from his humanoid I, butt or I, from his scorpion butt? I Where's his stomach? Know. Is his stomach in his scorpion body or is it in his human body? Where does where does this these are the questions I need answered. What happens to their poop? What uh, happens? <laughs> how do they eat? How? Where's their brain? 
Is their brain in their scorpion head, or is it in the whole body of the scorpion god's body? Because your head, see, this is why centaurs can't exist, is because this is a question, like, this is science. Dude, take an interest in science, okay? Because, look, I don't know how things happen. Do, do they have feelings? Do they care? Are they worried about their mortgage? I mean, I need to know oh, these gods things. gods don't eat. That's a good question. All right. Gods fine. don't I, eat. I, well, that's unfortunate. I can see the, envi- I, I can see the argument. All that's right. Fine. Fair. All I know, and one last thing. When this, when they make this token that's a 4-4 four, four zombie, it's got every ability, every line of text that that creature also had, no matter what it is. That yeah. matters and can matter a lot. This is, man, this this card is bananas. So congratulations to Wedge for getting such an amazing spoiler. This yeah. is this is beautiful. This is absolutely amazing. So so that was terrific. And uh, we're, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna turn it back around and talk a little bit more about Ixalan as we were, uh, because right. there's a few more things I thought were really interesting. Again, we talked about. The legendary status of the Planeswalkers, which I feel is going to be retroactive. I think they're going to go back and add it to every single one. Why? So you can play them as commanders. And you don't have to have a stupid line of text on them to say that you can play them as commanders. Like, first of all, they already have a legendary rule that says when you have two legends of the same name, you got to sack one. Well, you got two Gideons. You got to sack Gideon. So that makes sense, right? He can. He's a legendary dude. Uh, They are, like, the most lauded, like, you know, top echelon creatures in the game. That also kind of leads credence to that. Uh, there is treasure tokens, which makes sense, right? So, it's, it's you know, we're pirates, uh, which say tap, sacrifice this artifact. They're all artifacts, just like clues were, uh, to add one mana of any color to your mana pool. So you create treasure by doing, you know, things and stuff, and different cards make them in certain ways, and then you're able to use those to fuel the rest of your deck and keep moving. Um, however, one of the most kind of uh, I guess wordy mechanics, but once you get it, it feels like you're going to get it really quickly, is explore. Uh, certain things say explore, which means you reveal the top card of your library. If it's a non-land card, then you put a plus one, plus one counter on the creature that triggered this. Uh, if it's a land card, you can put it in your hand. And then if it's a non-land card, as we talked about putting a counter on, you can put it on the top or in your graveyard. Yeah. If you want, which is kind of cool, giving you kind of the yeah, ability really to see neat. what's coming up next. It boosts the creature, lets you kind of fix your draws, draws you a card at worst, you know, which fills up think, your graveyard. Absolutely. So, so that's a really yeah, cool. Yeah, if, if they make a like a one mana card that has uh, uh, has the explore ability, um, it is going to be worth testing in dredge certainly. <laughs> um, you know, anything that fills up your graveyard can be dangerous on that front. I think it's a really cool ability, and <clears throat> again. Anything that makes lands relevant, um, like landfall, uh, it, yeah. is, is exciting for me as well. So I really like Explore quite a bit. Mm-hmm. So Aaron, tell me how you feel about Sorceress Spyglass. This is the last thing we're going to talk about for Ixalan. <laughs> this was one of the clearest cards that was shown when the first leaks that actually happened. Uh, <coughs> I would describe it as Super Pithy Needle, which is it's a two mana peak plus Pithy Needle. You look at their hand and then you choose a non-land card and its activated abilities can't be activated unless they're mana abilities, just like a good old-fashioned pithy needle. So, uh, Aaron, how are you, you feeling about that one? <laughs> I don't know how to feel. <laughs> I don't know how things work! <laughs> I mean, the art is cool. Again, it feels like it's just one set too late, you know? Um, I guess the only question, I, the only concern I have is it relies on, it kind of reminds me of Pick the Brain, in that, you know, Pick the Brain... It has its uses certainly, but it's contingent on the card being in you, in their hand, um, and so so if I'm understanding this correctly, Anderson Battlefield look at an opponent's hand, choose a card name. The card has to be in their hand, correct? No, you just no. choose any card name. Right. Okay, I you thought just... it had to be in their hand or nope. look at their hand, then choose any card name. So even if they don't got Marvel in their hand, you can okay. be like, oh, this person has a tune with Ether and has okay. like sensor. I'm going to name Etherworks Marvel. Okay, then, then it goes up a little bit in my book. Then I think it's pretty cool. I thought I misunderstood how the card worked. So I think it's nice. You got a little bit of a Gataxian probe type effect in addition to Pithing Needle. Um, right. I still think it's a little, you know, there's still like things like maybe Heart of Kieran it could it could target, you know. Um, it's, so, it's, it's okay. I still think it's a little late. <laughs> All of these answer hate cards feel like, man, if they just, just one set earlier. Yeah. You know? yeah. And I feel like what we've gotten. You got the great Sable Stag problem. A little bit, yeah. I mean, I think a yeah. lot of what sort of Wizards has been trying to say is that they, you know, they hear the complaints, they hear the issues, they understand that it's been taking too long, and they're going to fix this moving forward. And now we're just seeing this like all the hate all the time for everything, right. 
we're sorry, guys. Here's some more hate. Hate, 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 hate. And mm-hmm. then a bit. A the bit other one, hate. the other thing I really like about Sorcerer's Spyglass that you get to do is you used to be able to, to play the fetch land lottery in Legacy with, like, turn one pithing needle and be like, oh, boy, scalding tarn. <laughs> Let's hope they drew the wrong half of their deck. This one you get to look. Yeah. And, like, you look at your hand, it's like, oh, they got three polluted deltas against my storm deck. Polluted delta, go. <laughs> and then they draw their card for the turn and concede. Love it. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, so like Meddling Mage kind of, I mean, this is a pretty cool looking card. I think this is a neat one. It was a super cool card, and I think really interesting just to, to imagine and think about what, again, had it been in Kaladesh, had it been in Aether Revolt, had it been in Shadows or something, you know what I mean? Like, had it existed in these worlds where we were just dying for something to stop activated abilities, you know, sure. the, the peaking needle, if you will. I think that, yeah, was, peaking needle, needle I like I that. I like peaking needle. You know, um, when, would be great. I think that um, this is something that the play design team is probably going to fix. This is my hunch, is that cards like this will get moved up three months, will get brought into the new sets when, when you know, Paul Cheon and company realize we need something from the future to help with this metagame. Right. Uh, I think, th- I'm hoping that that's a thing they're going to be able to do. And, I mean, clearly the core set's coming back. That's a big deal. That's a part of that this. That too, yes. That yeah. would help. Okay. So, uh, unfortunately, I believe we have, we've we run out of time in terms of yeah, man. being able to go over this amazing bracket, but we will save it. There was a... There, there we'll was save a, this bracket for So, later. if we're going to... I want to touch on one more card. I kind of mentioned it earlier in the show. We're not going to sure. talk about Ashes of the Abhorrent. Uh, you're going to have on. to remind me. Okay. So, one and a white. Okay. Enchantment. Okay. Uh-huh. Apparently it does players, something to the graveyard because I'm Aaron guessing... can't even. Players yeah. can't cast spells from graveyards. Oh. That's or pretty cool. activate abilities of cards in graveyards. Where was this? This is it's in the an Exelon. Oh, this is and an Exelon? Mm. Whenever a creature dies, you gain one life. Wow. That's rare. Yeah, so better. I mean, I don't know if it's rest in peace. Ooh, it is. It's rest in peace. If anyone needs me, I'm going to be sprinkling jacks under tires at Wizards headquarters. Just sprinkling, sprinkling, yeah, sprinkling. Two mana. Piece of cards in graveyards. Wow. Why? Why? Guys, you Why? Like, and so again, like, where was this card in like Ether Revolt? Like before we had to ban, you know, a delirium creature. Well, sure, would it be nice if we could have hated that stupid crap? Right. So it. Yeah, it doesn't necessarily get rid of cards in graveyards, which is one thing, you know, for what it's doesn't worth. Help. So it, it it doesn't necessarily hose delirium per se. It also doesn't stop you dredging. Like you're allowed to still dredge, right? It's the principle because it's Ruben. a replacement effect. That's correct. Yeah, it's a replacement effect. So I you ask can... for three things in this life. Okay, I ask for so little. One, to use my graveyard without impunity. Two, a decent brunch. And three, redo covering every every event. That's all I want on a life. That's it. Is that so much to ask for? That's all you need. Expand your horizons, Aaron. <laughs> We've seen worse. We've seen worse than this. Like rest in right. peace is way worse. This is one of those hate cards where you can destroy it and then keep playing your game of magic. Whereas rest in oh, peace is significantly it's, worse. It's, it's, this is a lot more like stony silence, where it's like it's kind of like upsetting while it's in play, but then while you, you can get rid of it later and then do all the, the stuff that you want to do. Just saying. Just saying. Well, and this will be worse, right? And I appreciate the fact that the that directly after Amonkhet is graveyard hate, eternalize hate, you know, embalm hate to this degree. Even if it, even if Aaron is hurt, even if there's, (laughs) even if there's pain, sometimes it's good pain. Have you ever read Rest in Peace? It's like this card is way better to have to to face down than Rest in Peace. It's pretty ridiculous. So. Right, so I didn't want to talk about everything, but the, the check lands are coming back. Some Petal Grove and friends are coming back. That's going to be really sweet. Um, yeah. So I'm pretty happy yeah, about nice. that. That said, it, it is, unfortunately, we're about to turn back into pumpkins, but we'll be back next week with all new content, along right. with an all new show. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm pretty excited about it, but we're going to turn the corner to the finisher. Now, the first thing we need to do is we need to pick a winner of our competition. Because, by God, we were giving away a playset, and we're going to pick somebody, and it's going to be awesome. We're drawing the winner metal, now. Metal tokens. Oh, snap. 
Let's see. Zero. Wait, what? <laughs> oh, I'm looking at the wrong one. Sorry. Apparently, uh, whatever. I, I'm I'm slow, and it's a thing. <laughs> All right, so here we go. So now we're going to draw these winners. Here we go. Let's do it. Humana, humana, humana. Mr. Ben Tyler. Ben Tyler, congratulations. Yeah. You have won your Yay. set. A, uh, a complete set of these four awesome tokens that are super Work. cool, and they're shiny, and they fit in sleeves, and they're great, and that's awesome. Yeah, so, they're super cool. I saw yeah. a couple of them up close when I was in Vegas. I didn't uh, like they, I didn't get a close look at them. It was just somebody was using them. Uh, but yeah, those are super neat. And the fact that they're beveled, in, uh, the new ones are beveled and have beveled. interesting angles and stuff on them. Yeah, it's super neat. Yeah, that's so cool. All right, so we turn the corner to the finisher. Turns out that this past Monday, just after GP Vegas ended, the National Weather Service reported that Las Vegas, Nevada posted the highest ever recorded temperature of 117 degrees in Sin City. Since then, Phoenix, Palm Springs, and many others also reported record highs. Death Valley came within degrees of the hottest it has ever been anywhere in the United States. Burbank Airport in Southern California grounded regional aircraft because the air was so hot and thin, it could not provide the lift needed to take off. Hashtag science. Take an interest in science. Basically, right. it's the perfect metagame, deserts, and hour of devastation. Okay? So yep. based on the spoiler season and the summer season heating up, what do you expect the next official hour of devastation preview to be, Ruben? Well, obviously for me, I would think it would be a red card. Deal four damage to each player. Unless that player packed enough aloe, approach of the second sunburn. <laughs> wow, that's 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 pretty good. I like that one, <laughs> Aaron. <laughs> so mine would also have to be a red card, as much as I loathe the idea. Um, exert each creature of a certain age currently going through menopause. Hot flash fires. <laughs> wow, holy cow! I mean, well, the struggle's real. Woo! Well, let me tell you. Each player sacrifices all islands and forests they control. A mythic from Hour of Devastation, no tea, no shade. That's right. Yeah. And the yes. islands are no tea, and the forests are no shade. Right. And together. And Love that it. ends another episode of Magic Mike's. Thank you guys for hanging out and joining us here to discuss all things magic. Thank you, Aaron. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Ruben. Oh, thank you. Absolutely. We're going to go to our final slide. I want to thank our sponsor, CoolStuffInc.com, my co-hosts, Aaron and Ruben. You guys for watching. and hope you support us at Patreon.com slash Magic Mics. Visit our website at MagicMicsPodcast.com that exists. Thanks to our Patreon supporters. Or follow, like, tweet, favorite, share, subscribe. Do all the things that are social that tell people that we exist. Catch us online at Twitch.tv slash Magic Mics. On Twitter at Magic Mics Cast. On Reddit at Reddit.com slash R slash Magic Mics. And on Facebook at Facebook.com slash Magic Mics. Talk to us privately at Magic Mics Podcast at gmail.com. Follow the audio-only podcast at Magic Mics Podcast at Libsyn.com. Or find us on iTunes or join us here next week same time same place for another episode of Magic Mike's good night everybody and also Magic Mike's top 10 Woo, next Tuesday you guys rule good night